Hey everyone, my name is Jason Fletcher and I work at the Charles Hayden Planetarium at the Museum of Science in Boston. This video was originally going to be a workshop at IPS, but now it's all online, so we're going to be covering nest drop. So you're probably wondering, what is nest drop? So nest drop is a VJ tool that allows you to perform with visuals that are automatically created and will also automatically react to the music. So in this video, we'll be going over much of the nest drop features, showing you what the visuals look like, what the tools are to be able to perform with these visuals, and then also many of the different ways to get the visuals into your dome, because that is tricky with real-time content. Before we dive into nest drop, I'd like to explain a little bit about a critical aspect about it, which is Spout. So Spout is a, um, a framework that's built into nest drop, and it's also built into a bunch of other VJ software. And what it allows you to do is anything that's rendered on the graphics card can then be shared with any other software that also supports Spout. And it's all done in real time with very little latency and very little overhead. So it's really useful because what used to be constrained to a single piece of software can now be shared to other pieces of software. All right, so here we are in Nest Drop. It's all loaded up and ready to go. So this window over here is the library window. This is where all the presets are contained. As you scroll around, you can see a few thousand, I think 2,000 presets. And then over here, this is the deck one preview window. So this is where you can preview the visuals as they're rendered. Um, this window also is sending out a Spout video stream that any other software which supports Spout can then link to and use in real time. So as you probably saw, as I hover over the, each of these buttons, it shows a real-time thumbnail of what it looks like. And these aren't pre-recorded video loops. These are actually rendered in real time by a dedicated preview engine. So we call it the live preview. So you can keep track of your favorite visuals that you come across by using these stars up here. So if you click and drag on a red star and drag it onto a preset button, then it adds a red bar. Then you can solo these presets, see all the red presets that you've marked, or red and green, and keep track of all your favorites. So if you're scrolling around a bunch in the library and you lose track of which one is the active one, you can simply click this button here, locate active preset, click it, and it'll scroll you right to the active one with this red outline. So you can also search in Nest Drop. You can do that by using this search bar up here. So if we type in slow, you can see the different comments I've added into buttons here. Uh, the search also takes into account the categories and subcategories and the preset file names themselves also. So you can also create key windows like these two down here by clicking on this button in the toolbar and it makes a new key window. So as you probably see here, there is a key window that has a red outline around it. That simply means that it is the active queue window, and if you hit spacebar, then it'll proceed to the next preset. So you can change the active queue window by double-clicking on the toolbar of the queue that you're interested in, and it'll make it active. So something else that the active queue window is useful for is the auto-change. So it's in this part of the toolbar up here. So if we enable it, then every four beats, the preset will be automatically pushed forward. So as you can see on these buttons in the queue, there's green text. Um, these are called comments. You can add comments onto any button in the library or in the queues. You can do that by typing into the hotkey. So let's just type like bright tunnel as if it's your own keyword. And then you click and drag it and add it to whatever presets that you want. So it can either be for like time markers for a live show or notes for when to like match a live song or even just notes uh, tags that you want for search. So if you open up the settings window, then you can see a bunch of different things. So for deck one, the one we're using now, you can change the transition time. So right now it's two seconds. Click the next one, you can see it transition slowly see how it slowly changes between it. But if we make it zero, it'll instantly change. You can also change the animation speed. Uh, right now it's at 30 frames per second. So if we crank it up to 60, 
then it doubles the speed of the renders of the whole engine because it's they're inherently linked. Here's where you can also change your resolution. So Nestrop can easily render at 8K by 8K at 60 frames per second. So if you head on over to the general tab of settings, uh, there's even more options, but a really useful one is the audio device. So if you click this, you can see different audio devices that are available. And if you choose one of these, then it'll be used to drive the deck visual reactions. So now if you head on over to the MIDI tab of the settings, we can use a MIDI controller to activate presets in a queue. So if we drag this MIDI device onto a queue, now it's activated. Now we just hit buttons on my MIDI controller and they automatically activate. And now when I drag this onto these buttons, now these are, um, these are mapped. So I can jam with these all intuitively and on the fly. We can also map the knobs, so if we turn them to activate them, we're just going to do one. Now if we go over to the decks and we drag this onto, let's say, animation speed. Now if we change this, we get to control the animation speed all with a knob. So this whole time we've been using Nestrop with just one deck, but it is possible to use it with multiple decks. So if we activate another deck, then it'll automatically execute. And you can activate this deck by right-clicking. So now we have two decks, and each of these are outputting a spout stream, which is super useful. But it's also possible to activate up to four decks. So here we go. They all automatically execute. There's deck three and deck four. And then to activate to each of these, so for deck three, if you hold right alt and click and then left shift and click and there you have it. Four different visuals at 4K. So using four decks might be a little bit intense, but two is actually quite useful since you can actually mix directly in Nestrop deck two and deck one. So here's how to do that. So we use the spout sprites this will overlay a sprite onto the deck that we select. So if we activate deck 2, you can see it's duplicated here as a sprite. And then if we change the alpha, spout sprite alpha for deck 2, we can actually crossfade between the two. You can also use spout sprites for creating a feedback loop within a single deck. So if we activate Nest Drop Deck 1 into Nest Drop Deck 1, then turn up the Spout Sprite Alpha and start to get a feedback loop and change the effect within the engine itself, all the way up until it just actually totally freezes. But there's always a certain threshold at which it creates kind of interesting effects. It's totally dependent on the preset though. Sometimes they look wonderful, other times they fall apart. So you can also use something called image sprites. So for image sprites, you just click on it and it's thrown into the visuals. You can also throw effects on here by holding control and using the middle mouse scroll wheel to add different effects on, on the images so that they animate all around and sometimes they get involved in the drawing process. There's overlay, which literally overlays it, and then nested, which literally gets involved in the drawing process of the visuals. So there it's hard to see the astronaut, but it's actually animating around in there. So you can also map your own hotkeys. So to do that, we're gonna use this box right here, and let's say we wanted to map one through six on the keyboard to these buttons in the queue. So we'll type one, two, three, four, five, six, drag and drop this box now onto the first one, and now they're mapped. So if I now hit one, five, four, you can see they're getting triggered by just hitting the keyboard. So something that's really useful is being able to save all of this stuff that we've been working on into a user profile. So all of these comments and our favorites and the queue windows, hotkeys, everything will be saved. You can just click on the save button and it saves to the default. Or if you want to save to a custom one, then you can just type in let's say your name here, save, and boom. That way you can have different operators have their own sets of favorites and cues, or maybe they're for different evening shows to have to one cue per song, you know, whatever you intend, go for it. So to help keep the presets organized, we put them into pre-made 
categories and subcategories. So here you see here's the reaction category, large text, and then here's the subcategories for automata and cloudy. We call these bookends. Um, so if you want to see them all or even jump to a different category, you can right click on the active preset locator and then let's say let's go to geometric. So these categories aren't just baked in to nest drop, you can actually make your own. So here we are in the presets folder in Windows and if you go to the geometric category you can see here are all of the subcategories and they match one to one. So you can actually make your own organizations by just putting the presets into different folders and nest drop will pick up on that automatically. So if you'd like to full screen the visuals directly from nest drop without using any other software just go into the settings or the direct output and then select the monitor that you want to full screen to. It'll take a moment and there it goes. So as an example of how to bring these visuals, the Spout video stream into a different piece of software, if we open up Resolume, and if we go to the Sources tab and then scroll the bottom, here is Nest Drop Deck 1, enable it, and there we go. The visuals are being shared between different pieces of software all in real time. Also included within the Nest Drop install is a user manual, which is about 22 pages of different information covering all the different features. So by default, Nest Drop includes a library of 1900 presets, but if you'd like even more, over on my blog, thefulldownblog.com, we include an additional, uh, well, a total of 9800 presets that are all organized in the same categories and so that you can just dump them in and start performing with them. So you're probably wondering at this point, uh, how do I get this running on my dome? I've never done real-time visuals. Well, here are a few options that I'm aware of, so let's get into it. So one hurdle is that Nest Drop only runs on Windows 7 or Windows 10. So if you're a Mac, sorry, you're out of luck. So the first one I'm gonna cover is the SkyScan Capture Server. Uh, because that's what we have at the Charles Hayden Planetarium. So basically what's happening here is there's a computer that's dedicated to rendering whatever you want. You know, if you want to throw Skype up on the dome or Nest Drop visuals or a video game, whatever you want, it'll do that. So basically what's happening here, you have a computer doing that and you have a, a GUI, one screen that controls, so you can actually control it. And then the secondary screen is what's mirrored to the dome. Right? So I just made that as if like monitor one, monitor two, and the monitor two is the dome itself. So what happens is the visuals that are rendered on monitor two are then piped into dark matter or digital sky and it becomes a texture which then you can then put on a polygon like a plane or a cylinder or sphere or whatever and then map it on the dome. But in essence it becomes a texture that you can use in Digital Sky Dark Matter, which is really interesting and ups the ante for the amount of stuff you can do. So the next one I'm going to cover is Digistar. I have no experience with Digistar to be honest, but I think this is an option. I'm not sure of the latency. Um, I think ENS has their own capture server solution, but in the latest version of Digistar, NDI is built in. It might be something that you have to ask them to enable, I'm not quite sure, but here's what I know, so it's on you to figure it out. But there's two options, basically it all depends on how powerful the GPU is in your master computer, um, because, so in option one, you can run Nest Drop on the same computer that runs the main interface of Digistar, so by going from Nest Drop, output to Spout, then that goes into a Spout to NDI application that's offered on the Spout website for free. And then that goes straight into Digistar because it can accept the NDI uh, interface. It's a way to share a video stream through the network. So it's very similar to Spout, but slightly different. And it's, um, yeah, it's really fancy. Uh, but if your master computer can't handle rendering all that, since NDI is a network uh, way of sharing visuals over a network, you could have a computer dedicated to 
nest drop, and then go through the same pipeline of spout output and spout to NDI app, go through the network, and then Digistar should see that in the NDI listing, and then go straight to the dome. So that's a possible way. It's totally untested, honestly, and your latency is probably going to be pretty high, but I don't know. Try it out. So another option is to actually map the dome yourself. If you are comfortable and you also have access to the projectors themselves, or if they have an auxiliary input, you could use a software such as NestMap, which is made by Patrick of Nest Immersion. So he's a very talented programmer. And it's a NestMap will automatically map the dome. So if you have a camera with a fisheye lens on it, you put it in, in the middle of the dome, and then you set up the software, you click go, and it auto maps your dome. It's pretty amazing. So on a single computer, if you have enough um, display outputs, you could run those with display extenders. There's numerous ways of doing this. It's beyond me. But basically, a single computer can be mapped straight to the dome. and kind of shortcut past your existing system. So the last option I'm going to cover is probably only really for the smaller domes or portable domes. The reason being is that those are often just a single computer going to a single projector. It's so much easier to set those up and keep them running without all the, the troubles that come along with multi-projector setups and blending and mapping and all that with multiple computers. So, if you have a, a system where you can literally move your cursor and see it on the dome, chances are you have a single computer, single projector set up. Uh, maybe just single computer. Anyhow, so in that case, uh, you could run it very easily. You just uh, have Nest Drop GUI on your monitor one, you know, normally where you put your star program, and then on Monitor 2 are the nest drop visuals full screened, and those are mirrored to the dome. Even with all of these options, it might still be technically impossible for you to get real-time content on your dome. And if that's the case, you could still record nest drop visuals at 4K or 2K or whatever is best for you, and then composite with it and layer it with other visuals, or you could just slice it straight for your dome and screen it that way. So just as a quick demo to show how easy it is to record, the nest drop is outputting a spout stream, and since it's doing that, we can use OBS. OBS is a, meant to be a streaming software, but we can install a spout plugin, which allows it to ingest the feed from deck one, and then we can record it at the full resolution, so 4K 30 frames per second, and it records out to a mp4 file. So there's a few settings you have to set up and I cover that elsewhere, but all you have to do from here is just hit start recording. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of Nest Jump and exploring all of its features and seeing what it can do. It's pretty powerful software and we're really proud of it. So if you want to check it out yourself, the software is currently available. Just visit the website nestimmersion.ca. So, happy VJing, everyone. See ya.